What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. In today's video we'll be covering a task 3 speaking question which can be accessed at zaventofo.com under TPO number 3. Alright, that's the reading passage, the topic is cognitive dissonance. Let's read the passage together to find the definition ASAP. Individuals sometimes experience a contradiction between their actions and their beliefs, between what they are doing, okay? These contradictions can cause a kind of mental discomfort known as cognitive dissonance. Okay, so cognitive dissonance is known as a kind of mental discomfort. So I'm going to first write down which is a kind of mental discomfort. And it says that these contradictions can cause this kind of mental discomfort. So I'm going to write down caused by. And then these contradictions, let's make it more specific. It's a contradiction between their actions and their beliefs. So caused by a contradiction between their actions or people's actions and beliefs. So the full definition, cognitive dissonance, which is a kind of mental discomfort caused by a contradiction between people's actions and beliefs. So what we had to do was we had to read the first sentence and the second sentence to realize that the first sentence actually gave us the definition. Let's deconstruct what happened once again. These contradictions is referring to the contradiction that was mentioned in the first sentence. So we're going to hold out on that for now. But we should have noticed that cognitive dissonance was definitely mentioned to us in the second sentence. And it's not that hard to paraphrase. It says, can cause a kind of mental discomfort. So I'm first writing down, cognitive dissonance is a kind of mental discomfort caused by, and then I'm going to look for the specific information in the first line, a contradiction between people's actions, not their actions, because if we write there, a pronoun without any modifier before it, it's going to be pretty confusing. So change there to people's and then copy and paste actions and their beliefs. All right. So I did that pretty swiftly just now, but please feel free to rewind this section of the video so that you can listen to the explanation one more time and try to get a better hang of it. All right. This kind of reading passage is not too easy to take notes on because there is no sentence that we can just copy and paste word for word. And if you're able to figure these kinds of reading passages out, you will not be afraid of whatever kind of reading passage presents itself for the test three speaking questions. So even though it might kind of make you feel a headache, uh, make you get a headache, don't skip over this process and get used to it, please. Because if you're really comfortable with doing something like this on your own, you're not going to be so nervous at the test. And that's the biggest deal breaker for most people, their nerves, the fact that they can't maintain their composure and the fact that they're panicking at the test. So please take care of these things so that you become more confident and thus do a much better job at the real test. All right, we don't need the reading passage anymore since we have a nice definition. Let's go ahead and listen to the lecture. This is a true story from my own life. In my first year in high school, I was addicted to video games. I played them all the time and I wasn't studying enough. I was failing chemistry, that was my hardest class. So this was a conflict for me because I wanted a good job when I grew up and I believed, I knew, that if you want a good career, you gotta do well in school. But I just couldn't give up video games. I was completely torn. And my solution was to, to change my perspective. See, the only class I was doing really badly in was chemistry. In the others, I was, I was okay. So I asked myself if I wanted to be a chemist when I grew up, and the fact is I didn't. I was pretty sure I wanted to be a sociologist. So I told myself my chemistry class didn't matter, because sociologists don't really need to know chemistry. In other words, I changed my understanding of what it meant to do well in school. I reinterpreted my situation. I used to think that doing well in school meant doing well in all my classes. But now I decided that succeeding in school meant only doing well in the classes that related directly to my future career. I eliminated the conflict, at least in my mind. Using the example discussed by the professor, explain what cognitive dissonance is and how people often deal with it. All right. Now, I'm taking out a lot of the very specific details that painted a nice picture for us that gave us a lot of background information and prefaced the example. But 
they are not necessary in our sample response because although I don't know the duration of this lecture, I'm pretty confident in that it's a little bit longer than 60 seconds. So statistically, logistically, mathematically speaking, you do have to ignore a lot of details that the professor gives us, okay? Now, over here, um, I'm going to get rid of the detail that was about how the professor was only failing chemistry class out of the myriad of classes that he was taking back in the day. Um, I'm going to take that out because that's not really necessary. And I'm only going to be focusing on the fact that he wanted to be a sociologist. Um, not that chemists or not that he doesn't want to become a chemist after he graduates high school and that chemists uh, and that sociologists don't have to do well in chemistry. I'm going to just take all of that out and just get to the point, get to the meat of the lecture. All right, so let's look over the details. To begin with, the professor was addicted to video games in high school and was failing chemistry class. Now, when you're starting the uh, summarization of the lecture's information, be sure to say the professor instead of he, because if you just say he, the pronoun, the listener might be confused as to who he actually is. Is it the professor who gave us the lecture, or is it just another man, or is it another, another boy, another child, another male teenager? So in the beginning, start with the professor so that you mention that modifier and then are allowed to use a pronoun. So the first sentence taken care of, the professor was addicted to video games in high school and was failing chemistry class. Plus, he knew that he had to do well in school in order to get a good job, but he still couldn't give up video games. On the other hand, don't say but again. On the other hand, he wanted to be a sociologist. So he decided to reinterpret the situation and to only do well in the classes that are directly related to his future career, which is sociology. In other words, the professor was able to eliminate this conflict by doing what? By reinterpreting the situation or changing his perspective. All right, let's see how I put this all together in my sample response, and please be sure to lip sync along if possible. In the lecture, the professor elaborated on a specific example of himself to explain the concept of cognitive dissonance. To begin with, the professor was addicted to video games in high school and was failing chemistry class. Plus, he knew that he had to do well in school in order to get a good job, but he still could not give up video games. On the other hand, the professor actually wanted to be a sociologist, so he reinterpreted the situation and decided to only do well in the classes that are directly related to his future career. Needless to say, he was actually able to eliminate this conflict by simply changing his perspective. To sum up, this was a perfect example of cognitive dissonance, which is a kind of mental discomfort caused by a contradiction between people's actions and their beliefs, given by the professor in the lecture. Tada, voila, I'm done. I had about, um, I don't really remember actually, but it was definitely more than 15. I think I had about 17 seconds left when I looked at the time after I finished summarizing the lecture's information. And since the number is more than 15, I went ahead with the definition. Now, if your ending sentence starts when you have about 10 seconds left, just make the ending sentence short like so. To sum up, this was a perfect example of cognitive dissonance given by the professor in the lecture. Okay, so what you're doing is you're simply jumping over the definition. You're simply skipping the definition if you don't have enough time. And when is it that you don't have enough time? When you only have about 10 seconds or fewer than that left. All right, please don't overextend yourselves. Don't bite off more than you can chew when you do not have enough time to give a full wrap up, including the definition. So my philosophy is this. Summarizing the lecture's information is clearly more difficult and more important in the eyes of the TOEFL grader, right? So please, prioritize this before mentioning that, which is the reading's information. Mention the reading's information at the end of your response if you do have enough time, okay? But please, jump over it, save it for the end, because this is priority number one. That makes a lot of sense to me, okay? All right, that was the question that I wanted to go over today. That was my sample response. 
If you enjoyed what you heard, saw, and experienced, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share the content, but most importantly, if you are a self-disciplined and dedicated person, reach out to me about my tutoring services. Let's get the score that you need and deserve as quickly as possible in 2020 once everything gets back to normal. Peace.